Welcome back, gang. Today, we're talking about absolute dependent motion. If one thing moves, how does another thing that's connected to it, maybe through a system of pulleys, how does it move? And, and how are, is one block related to the other one? I know y'all love yourself some pulley problems, right? So I've got four, one, two, three, and then we'll work this one at the end, okay? And kind of show you what's going on. Uh, let's start off with something simple, okay? Number one, all of these things are going to depend on one thing, and that is getting the velocity and acceleration of one block as it moves, how is it related to the other one, or how is it dependent on, on the other one, okay? So one of the things that we're going to have to do is remember something very simple, and that is um, the fact that velocity is the derivative of position. Remember that? So if I take position and I take a derivative of that with respect to time, then that gives me a velocity, okay? And so we're going to have to remember a little derivative thing. Remember what, what happens if we take the derivative of a constant, right? It goes away. It turns to zero. That's important for this. So let's look at this guy right here. We've got SA and we've got SB. If we talked about the total length of that rope right there, okay, the length of the rope that's in between these two datums right here, whoa, that little arc rope right there, no matter where A or B is, right, on that, that little length of rope doesn't change. It's a constant, okay? And when I take the derivative of that length, it's just gonna turn into zero. The other thing that's a constant is the entire length of the rope. Let's call that L, just for like length of rope. So if I do this, if I say SA plus SB equals L, like the total length of that rope, do you agree with that? That's good, right? Well, I mean, yeah, plus that little constant right there. We could put him in there, right? Plus little uh, length of the little arc. But they're both, both of these things are constant. So if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get for my velocity equation, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get the velocity of A plus the velocity of B is equal to zero. Or I could just say that uh, the velocity of A is equal to negative velocity of B. So if velocity of A moves down, then B is going to move up. That's where the negative means, right? And if B moves this way, that one moves that way. That's pretty simple, right? This is called a time derivative, okay? The time derivative derivative. I can spell that. There you go. So all we're doing is we're taking the length. These can vary. So they're like variables. They're like an X. Uh, these are constant. So the constants are going to turn into zeros and my velocity is going to be um, some number. Now, acceleration is the same way. I didn't give myself a lot of room right here, did I? So for this particular scenario here, the velocity of A equals the negative velocity of B. The acceleration of A equals the negative acceleration of B. They're kind of one to one. Because I'm only going over one pulley, whatever length of rope is moving that way, that side has to move the same. So those, those conditions have to be true. Let's go into something a little more complicated. How about this condition? Now I've got a rope that goes over a pulley, over another pulley, and then back down and around. Oh my lordy, okay? Let's see if we can do it the same way. Ready? Here we go. Uh, the I only have one rope in here, right? And so, again, I'm going to ignore these little constant sections. That one, I'm going to ignore that one, and I'm going to ignore that one. And I have a datum here that kind of goes through the point where that rope comes off that pulley. This is really the variable amount of the rope right here. This amount right here is not really variable. It's constant all the time. Okay? So I'm going to ignore that. So, uh, let's see. Total length of the rope. I only got one rope, so the length of the rope is equal to what? Well, it's equal to SB. This amount right here, does it change? I could, I could make him red too, right? He doesn't change. Does, no matter where A goes, does this amount here change? Not really. So even that is constant, right? So I'm, all I'm really worried about is what is the length of the, of the variable rope, okay? The constant part I'm not worried about, um, but just what is this? What is the length of that guy and that guy and that guy? Okay, that length is not variable either, is it? That's, that doesn't make sense. What is the length of the rope? Let's just put the length of the rope. Okay, so the length of the rope is going to be on SB plus 
There's another, oh, there's another SB, isn't there? And then uh, this length here, as that changes, that, that SA can vary, right? So plus SA, okay? Now again, if I take the time derivative of that, this is gonna be a constant. That total length of that rope never changes. So that's gonna to go to zero. So what I'm gonna get is uh, two velocity of B plus the velocity of A is equal to zero, or two, the velocity of B is equal to negative the velocity of A. And again, the same thing goes for acceleration. Two, acceleration of B equals negative acceleration of A. Now let's prove that. Look what I have here. I've built you a little system over here, and I've taken my ruler and I've drawn off some marks on the board at one inch increments. And then I've got the rope coming down and then to this golf ball here. Now it's really the same as this, isn't it? Here's the rope coming down and then back up and then over and then here's my golf ball, right? So I'm just varying this length of rope versus this length of rope over here. I'm just kind of taking that and pulled it back over here. Watch what happens. If I take okay, this, so I'm gonna move this down 10 and where's this other guy going to? Okay, I moved him down 10 inches, but look, this guy only went up five inches. So as I pulled 10 inches of string down, I took 10 inches of string out over here, but in order to do, do that, it had to take five inches on this side and five inches on that side. So this guy only moved half the distance of that one. What happens to velocity? Watch this. If I take and pull this guy down, this one's gonna be moving up. Now watch the speed of this one versus the speed of that one. Uh, it ought to be, I mean, whatever time it takes for me to get from here to there, this guy has the same amount of time because that's all the time I'm pulling on the string, but he's got to travel twice as far, so he's got to go twice as fast, right? So let's see if we can see that, ready? Whoop. It's pretty good, right? So that kind of proves what's going on here kind of physically. Do you see it? All right, let's move on to one that's just a little bit harder, okay? This one is different because it doesn't have just one rope in the system. Let's call, oh, I don't know, let's call this guy rope one. You're, oh, that's not one. They're, you're rope one and you are rope two, okay? Now we're gonna use the same system we used over here to see if we can calculate what is the relationship between A and B as A goes down, I don't know. Let's say A moves down at five meters per second. Then what's the speed of B, right? Now, as A moves down, B is going to move up, right? I can see that, uh, but I don't have any idea what the relationship is. Let's see if we can calculate it, okay? So, here we go. Uh, let's do rope one first, okay? So, rope one is this guy here, okay? Uh, how long is rope one? Well, it's, again, I'm going from those datums because I don't care about this constant bit, right? I don't care about this constant bit of rope, I don't care about that constant bit of rope, and I don't care about that constant bit of rope. I really don't even care about that little constant bit there either, right? All I'm caring about is the little variable part of the rope. So rope one, which is just uh, uh, this guy right here, right? Let's see, how long is that? Uh, SC plus, ooh, how long is uh, that? SB, right? That's, that's what I have, I'm calling from this upper datum to this pulley right here, to where B is attached, right? SB uh, equals length of rope one, okay? So what I'm saying is, is that those two guys are gonna be equal to each other, okay? So what happens here is the velocity of C is gonna be equal to the negative velocity of B, right? I guess if you wanna write it more completely, we could do it all at one step. I did it two steps there at a time. Velocity of C plus Velocity of B equals zero. There's our derivative, that's a constant, so it goes to zero. Then move that to the other side. Velocity of C equals negative velocity of B. Okay, so there's one relationship right there. Okay, so there's that. Let's calculate the length of rope two. Okay, now rope two is here. Okay, there's rope two. So for rope two, let's do it one piece at a time. Let's do this guy here. What is the length of that piece of rope? Well, it's it's SA, and remember S is the position of A, right? That's just what that means. So this is SA minus SC would give us this length here, okay? So SA minus SC, there's one piece of the rope. The next piece is this piece here. Let's see, what is that guy? 
How about SB minus SC? And I guess SB minus SC. And then the last piece of the rope is this guy over here. That's just SB, right? So plus SB. So let's see if we can simplify this. This turns into what? SA. Uh, I got two SC's, but they're negative, minus two SC. And then I've got two SB's, but they're positive. Equals the length of rope two. Okay. Again, we take the time derivative. This guy's going to go zero, so we're going to get this. The velocity of A minus two velocities of C plus two velocities of B equals zero. I don't like that velocity of C. What I really want to know is how does B move in relation or how is it dependent to block A? C is really just a pulley anyway, right? I don't need to know about that. I could figure it out if I wanted to though, right? Okay, so what, what have I got here? I need to get rid of C, but we can do this equation up here and we can plug a negative V in there, a, a VB rather. But I'm gonna plug a negative in, I already got a negative, so negative negative makes it positive, right? So I'm gonna get this, what? VA, uh, let's say plus four VBs equals zero, or um, VA negative equals four VB. Now does that make sense? I've got a negative that says that if B moves positive, then A is gonna move negative. Let's see, if I pull down on that, then A, yeah, A is gonna go up, right? Or if I pull down on A, B is gonna go up, right? They're moving in opposite directions. So if A is moving at five meters per second, right, five, then what is VB? Well, it's simply VB would be equal to negative, right, five over here, divide that by four, so five divided by four, which is what, uh, 1.25? Negative 1.25, um, is that right, 2.5 divided by two, 1.25, right? meters per second. And that would be the answer for the velocity of B on that problem. Okay, you got one more in you? Let's see if we can do that one over there, okay? Let's erase some of this and give ourselves some room. That's better than it was, okay. So here we've got uh, this crazy system here. And don't be afraid of this, right? What, if this thing, if you turned it like 90 degrees, it would look just pretty much like that, wouldn't it? So. Same, same deal. Uh, let's do some different colors over here. Let's do this color. Got an orange one here. Let's say that the whole distance between here and here, I don't know, we'll call that distance B, okay? Again, I've got me some datums in here. Let's just call that a datum. Uh, let's call that a datum. And I got a datum there, and I got a datum there, right? Oh, and I got something over here too. I got something there, okay? Let's call this SA. Now SA is gonna go from there all the way over to A. Mm, I got a B, let's call this guy C, right? And let's call this guy D. Uh, so let's call this SC. And we'll call this, huh, I'm out of letters. Let's make that guy D, your D, okay? I got, SD, and I got, uh, that's it, right? This is also SD over here, isn't it? Okay. I don't need to know about this because this doesn't change. It's, it's fixed, right? That's kind of one of our little our red lines, okay? That, that length there doesn't change. This length around here doesn't change. The length around there doesn't change. Um, this little length right there. It, well, that doesn't change either, but that overall length does, right? So let's see if we can work this out. Again, we've got two ropes, so we've got more than one rope. Let's say, right, here's, let's make this guy here, let's make him rope one. Your rope one. Come on, rope marker. Your rope one, and you are rope two over there, okay? So let's see if we can write an equation. Let's do rope one first. So L1 is equal to, what is rope L1 equal to? Can we do it? Let's start down here. We've got an SD and an SD, right? SD, SD, and then what is this guy here? Um, we call him, what do we call, oh, that's SC. 
SA is up there, right? So this is SC. Okay. So for that one, um, we get what? Uh, two velocities of D is equal to a negative velocity of C. Okay. Um, and what else do we get? So rope two, L2, is equal to, uh, how about this, B, that's the whole thing, minus, minus what, SC, right? That gives me this length here. B minus SC gives me that length there. And how about this length here? Um, it's just SA, isn't it? Plus, no, it's not. SA is the whole length. I need to do SA minus SC, don't I? SA minus SC. Okay? Because that's, that's length 2. So what does this give me? This gives me L2 equals B minus uh, two SCs plus an SA. Right? And if I take the derivative, now how about B? Is B going to be a constant or is it going to be variable? B is always constant. It's just the distance, that overall length there. So it's going to go to zero. So what I get here is that SC, actually two SCs, is going to equal an SA. Well, not an SA. How about a V? The velocity of C is going to equal the velocity of A. Okay? So I've got, because I have two, I just move it to the other side when all this becomes zero, right? So velocity of C and velocity of A, are they're going to be the same, and they're going to go, uh, I'm sorry, they're half as much, but they are going to be, look, the signs are the same, so that means they're moving in the same direction. Does that make sense? If I move A that way, does this pulley here move that way? Yes, it does. Okay, again, um, you know what, can we, uh, one more thing to clarify, instead of calling that D, can we just call that B? Can we call that B? Do you agree that wherever that pulley moves, that B moves, those two are totally related to each other, right? No matter what happens, right? Just to kind of not be confusing. So let's make that D into a B, okay? You are a B because we are bad at our notation. Okay, that, now it's B for better. Okay, again, now I can plug this in here, right? And what, what do I get when I plug this in? Uh, for VC, all right? So VC is going to equal negative, I can multiply through by negative 1, right, put it over there. So I get 2 times uh, negative 2 VB, that's my substitution for VC, equals VA. And so the velocity of point A, or block A, is going to equal negative 4 the velocity of block B, okay? So... Does that, that make sense? If I pull A that way, does block B go this way? Is it negative? Yes, it is. Okay, so if block B moves three meters per second, right? If block, I'm sorry, block A, if it moves three meters per second to the right, then what is block B gonna do? Okay, let's just put a uh, three meters per second in for A. And then I've got a negative 4 over here for VB. And so VB is equal to negative 3 fourths or 0.75 meters per second. And there you go. Wow, is there some opportunity for mistakes in here with this? Yes, so be, be very careful. Okay, but that's how you do relative or absolute dependent motion. How's one block move relative to another one? Okay. All pulley problems. So if you kind of go back and think about this and kind of keep that in your mind, maybe that helps. All right, see you next time.